In this video, we'll talk about the difference between savings and investment and how the financial system coordinates savings and investments and allocates resources. Now let's talk about the definition of saving and investment. Private saving is the income that is left over after households pay their taxes and consumption. An investment, on the other hand, is the purchase of new capital. Let's keep those two straight. Investment is not the purchase of stocks, bonds, or other assets. I know we colloquially say that you're investing in the stock or the real estate market, but in fact, what you're doing is you are saving. You are purchasing assets for future use. You are not investing. Again, investment is the purchase of new capital. With those two definitions clear, let's talk about the model for today the market for loanable funds. The market for loanable funds is a simple demand and supply model of the financial system. It will help us illustrate how the financial system coordinates savings and investment in the economy. It would also help us analyze how government policies affect saving and investment and the interest rate. Here are the key assumptions for the market for loanable funds. Number one, there will only be one financial market. Number two, all savers deposits their savings in this market. Number three, all borrowers take out loans from this market. And lastly, number four, there's only one interest rate. And this interest rate is both the return to saving and the cost of borrowing. So now I have a qu couple of questions for you. Are these assumptions reasonable? What are we missing here? As you know, just like any other model, the market for loanable funds is representing a much complex reality. And whether or not this model is useful depends on the assumptions. So tell me what you think. Please answer those questions on Top Hat, take a minute, and then move along. The first component of the model is supply. Households supply their funds to this market from their savings. On the x-axis, we have the interest rate, and on the y-axis, we have the quantity of savings or the supply of loanable funds available in this market. The interest rate from the perspective of households is the return on their savings. And as we expect, as the interest rate increase or the return on your savings increases, the quantity of loanable funds households are willing to supply increase as well. The second component of this market is the demand. And the demand comes from investment. Firms that would like to borrow to purchase new capital come to this market in search for funds. On the x-axis, just like before, we have the interest rate, and on the y-axis, we have the quantity of loanable funds demanded. From the perspective of a firm, this interest rate is the cost of borrowing, and as such any cost, as uh, the interest rate or the cost of borrowing decreases, we should expect an increase in the demand uh, for loanable funds. The opposite would be true. As interest rates increase, the quantity of loanable funds demanded would decrease. Putting those two components together, we can reach the equilibrium. The equilibrium for this market is where supply and demand meet. Anytime the interest rate is above 5%, the supply exceeds the demand, and there is downward pressure on interest rates. The opposite is true. When, uh, when the interest rate is below 5%, demand exceeds supply and there's upward pressure on interest rates. Once we reach equilibrium, however, everybody who wants to lend at that interest rate is able to lend and everybody who's willing to borrow at that interest rate is also able to do so. Now, an important fact to highlight here is that in equilibrium, Supply equals demand also has another important interpretation because supply is savings. In this case, equilibrium means that savings equals investment. And that 
is the investment level that we record in our GDP calculations. So you can think about the market for loanable funds here as determining that equilibrium level of investment for every year that we collect in GDP. So let's analyze policy one, savings incentive. A savings incentive uh, reduces taxes on savings. So if the government decides to reduce taxes on savings, that will incentivize people to save more. So savings incentives will increase the supply of loanable funds. Immediately after the change, the supply of loanable funds at 5% interest rate will exceed the demand. And as we mentioned before, that will exert downward pressure on the interest rate. The new equilibrium level of interest rate will be 4%. That will accompany an increase in the equilibrium loanable funds. That means that savings and investment will increase from 60 billion to 70 billion. Let's think about another type of policy incentive. In this case, we have incentive tax credits. An, incent an investment tax credit reduces tax liability for firms who are purchasing new capital. And this investment tax credit will increase the demand for loanable funds. As we mentioned in the previous scenario, at the original interest rate of 5%, at the moment that the incentive tax credit takes effect, we should expect the demand to exceed supply. For that reason, we should expect also upward pressure on interest rates. At the new equilibrium interest rate of 6%, we have that loanable funds have also increased from 60 billion to 70 billion. So before we look at the third policy, let's think about the role of government in the market for loanable funds. By assumption, the government is going to be a saver. That means that they will always be part of the supply. Now the government can have either a budget surplus or a budget deficit. A budget surplus happens when taxes exceed government spending. So public savings are positive. On the other hand, budget deficits happen when taxes are less than government spending, so that public savings are negative. Now, in both cases, we are going to say that government budget surpluses add to savings and budget deficits reduce savings. We know, generally speaking, that a budget deficit means that the government needs to borrow but we are not going to put them on the demand for loanable funds. We will keep them in the supply. So once more, a budget surplus adds to national savings and a budget deficit reduces national savings. Now I would like you to think about the effect of budget deficits on the market for loanable funds. I want you to use the loanable funds model to analyze the effects of government budget deficit. Here are the steps, and I would like you to follow them. So please take out a piece of paper and draw the diagram showing the initial equilibrium of the market for loanable funds. For then afterwards, I'd like you to determine which curve, curve shifts when the government runs a budget deficit. Then I want you to draw a new curve on the diagram representing the shift. And lastly, I want you to think about what happens to the equilibrium values of the interest rate and investment? As usual, please answer on top hat. Thank you for your responses. So in my diagram, a budget deficit reduces national savings and of course the supply of loanable funds. By shifting the supply curve to the left, the new equilibrium has an interest rate that's higher than the previous one, with the quantity of loanable funds in equilibrium being reduced. Now, an important thing that I would like to highlight is that the equilibrium of this market sets savings equals to investment. So the government, by running a budget deficit, is crowding out private investment and reducing the amount of capital that we're building for future production. This can have some negative effects on the economy as is it will lead to a lower level of capital that would otherwise be available.